Oh, we're running. Hello. We're here with uh, Driftwood Amplifiers, which is weird because you're not with an amplifier. You're with the people from, from Amplifiers, right? Come on, people, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm, I'm Marek from Driftwood Amps. Hi, I'm Lasse, Lasse Lamert. Everyone fucking knows Lasse. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Peter. Uh, <laughs> you might not know me. I built amps. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. Who's this gentleman with the hair? Morning, everybody. How's it going? Got my coffee. Doing all right. Slumming it this morning. He's a man with, with the gold. What's up? I'm Bobby Keller. How you guys doing? Yeah. Look at this decadent piece of something. And it's actually, it, it, this is false fucking advertising because it says driftwood. There is no wood on this. This is rack mounted. Because I always thought the whole idea of driftwood, come back up here. No, of, no, 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 what, no. He's, he stole that amp from C.C. DeVille from Poison. <laughs> well, come on, show your guitar. Yeah. Because the, the reason for, for the... stolen from Poison. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is just... Uh, the big question is like, what is wrong with you, man? That's that's my big question. Wow. I the, uh, the most obnoxious guitar ever. You know, I don't like I don't like gold hardware on guitars. I didn't either. But that is fucking. I mean, you went so fucking gold. Yeah, I went all out. I, I don't play games, you know. And uh, Collins would be proud of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the ESP uh, USA shop, and uh, I told him I wanted the most loudest, obnoxious guitar when it's not plugged in. So this was it. All gold. Plat everything. But do you have platform shoes on stage when you play? Oh, I do have my gold boots, but I didn't wear them today. So, so, so the amp is absolutely. But why, why, why rack mounted? Why, why not cool? Yeah, well, I use the <laughs> I use the rack mount systems. Uh, I have a, I have another one that's actually blood splattered. So this is uh, the new one that's going to be going in the rack as well. So you're doing jazz, right? All jazz and some blues. Nice, nice. Maybe some pop. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But uh, I love it, you know, rack mounted, it's, it's you know, it's easy to carry around, you know, for the most part, and uh, it's the 50 watt version, it's got the IR loaders in the back, and uh, it's kind of the best of both worlds, you know, like, because I used to use the Kempers and everything like that, so, <coughs> yeah, no, that's what happened. <laughs> um, so, I thought the whole idea of driftwood amplifiers is that they are rather affordable for the quality because they're made from reclaimed wood, because, I mean, driftwood... What, why else call it that? I mean, Marek, what, isn't that the whole idea how you started the company, walked on the beach, found some driftwood, shaped like a head, yeah. and, then, and then you're like, I don't even know what to do, I don't really build amps, and then you call Peter, who then <laughs> put all the guts inside, yes, and you just shape the wood that you find. Isn't that yes. the story? Uh, normally, yes, but uh, I, I just walked on the, on the ocean beach there, and I just found a really nice piece of wood. I think, okay, that would be fit Bobby Keller. And then it, I just set it, it fled, and just painted it with gold sparkles, so it's still driftwood under the gold. Ah, that's, it's a wooden panel. Yes, yes, yes. It's true to the idea of the company. Yes, yes, yes. Now, why is driftwood as a material only really valuable to the heavy playing community? I don't know. I think it's like, like a tone wood, maybe. <laughs> let's bring Glenn in here oh, for this. Oh, oh, Glenn is here. I so, skip that. So, Glenn, let's talk tone wood. On it smells like bullshit in here. Let's talk tone wood on amp heads. <laughs> what, 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 is that, val uh, is that a val 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 valid? Valid thing uh depends on how much money you have and how gullible you are a lot of people have a lot because you know anyone that's it's buying like the the boutique stuff and this i mean these are not you know your bargain basement amps so obviously sure, they're people are very gullible uh, okay, well, I was going to say maybe it has something more to do with the circuit design than the actual you know, wooden construction. You want to tell me, you want to tell me that these made from birch plywood or driftwood will sound exactly the same even if I made them from mahogany or maple? Seriously? Do you want to tell me that the physics of the wood of the amp head has nothing to do with the sound? Of the amp? Yeah. And you're surprised by this? It's all about a feeling. It's just a feeling. He can't recall feelings. So. It's a mouth feel. Okay. <laughs> they actually mouth painted. Oh, fuck. Okay. okay. Hold on, on a mouth feel here. <laughs> Open wide. <laughs> so, um, what, one, one, minute, one minute of uh, re reality, realism. Yes, um, one minute of reality. Handing deuces daus is ein penis. <laughs> Driftwood amps, pretty heavy shit, pretty gnarly, raw drive, and then to give it even more saturation, they usually come with a tube screamer built in, which is, very cool. which is, I mean, he says it's very cool. I just don't understand. Well, 
Hmm. I always bitch about amp companies whose amps are all muddy and round, fucking Mesa things, and then you need a stupid cheap-ass pedal to make them sound good, which I don't understand. I always ask myself, why don't amp manufacturers just make the amps not shitty? Why doesn't Mesa just go ahead and everyone knows you need a tube screamer to make a Mesa sound good? Why don't they just make it sound good right out of the factory like Rev can or like these guys can? Well, Revs are just voiced differently. They're not really... So you don't need a tube screamer. His is, if you want it, but then he was smart enough just to put the stupid little cheap circuit inside to roll off the low end, push the mids, roll off the high end a little bit, and give you that sound that you get from your overpriced Mesa with a 50 euro pedal. So I just don't understand these. Peter, as an amp designer. Yeah. Like, when I designed these. <laughs> don't you think, I mean, you have a billion amps. Uh, roughly, yeah. And oftentimes you got to put a tube screamer horizon, whatever, which, yes, which technically for that sound. But like people tr use more sounds, like different sounds. Some want that muddiness, some want some girth and thickness, and that just gives the option to. Have, but well, shouldn't a? I'm, I'm, I'm staying with Mesa because that's Gibson's and and, yes. and, 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 and the fuckers suck. Okay. Prime example. Uh, so, but why wouldn't that amp have a switch? that gives you that pre-EQ, because what you're doing is pre-EQ. Yeah, right? you're essentially cutting before the first gain stage to just uh, get rid of some of the muddiness. I get mad, and please correct me because you're the master on this, I get mad when people call it a boost. Yeah. Because it's not, yeah. you're pre-EQing your guitar, and it, how weird is it that we have this massively cool, expensive, and Fishman and all that shit guitar, and then this massively cool mega amp and all this, but Together, they can't get the sound without a freaking cheap ass tube screamer. Yeah, that's what clones for. You buy the same thing but pay a couple of thousand for a clone Centaur, and then <laughs> and they've got an expensive pedal and in then front you of it. <laughs> it and, and, then, and then you take you take all the guts out of the chassis, put it in a maple chassis, and then you got it's the brighter. attack. It's brighter. It's brighter. Um, if you want the low mids, you need some need a, like a mahogany chassis. It's a thing. And Glenn's gonna strangle us. <laughs> but I I love the idea that. I mean, he could have actually not called it Tube Screamer Circuit. He could have just said, here's my pre-EQ. I mean, he's, he's calling it what it is. He's honest about it. But his amp just has that leanness in the low end built in by just kicking in that, that circuit. Well, it actually can get quite tight and lean without the Tube Screamer as well. It's really just a different curved, different option. Same thing for me as Rev, for example. I would never put a boost in front of a Rev because they just... They don't, if you play a ref with a 412, you don't have that, oh my God, look at the heaviness, because it is mix ready. Yeah. So with this amp, you can get it mix ready. I just uh, told him, your IR is in the pedal, in, uh, in that thing, um, which should be pink, by the way. Um, and uh, I said, ah, oh, it's really top endy and scratchy and very bright. I'm like, that, I said, that's the last IR, right? And he's like, yep, <laughs> because you don't give IRs that are very pleasant. No to listen to when you listen to it by itself, but you put that in the mix, you're probably not EQing it much, right? Exactly, because uh, I think in IR, what, what it should be used for, what most people are using it for, is to get a quick mix-ready tone for the mix at home, for a demo, or for whatever. And usually you're not playing it by yourself, and well, some people do, but in my mind, it's, it's supposed to work in the mix, so you need some bite, some top-end bite, and some uh, aggression. I, I think we should make distinctions between IRs that are fun to play yeah. for practicing, and you just put it on, and you don't need a cab, and you want a little bit of the woofy lower end, you want the feel of, there's a cab, a Glenn's IRs, they're yeah. all like, you know, a little bit thicker. But then, yours, not so much fun when you listen to it by itself. I, you, you gave me one from a Dietzel cab for the Dietzel something pedal. Yeah. And Peter Dietzel himself was like, I don't really like it. I'm like, well, it, it, the video got a lot of hate for the sound of the IR, mm. even, it, even though it was your Dietzel cab, mm. but it was mix ready. Yeah. And playing it in the video without the mix around it, a little bit harsh. Absolutely. But um, you don't same, use it without the mix. Exactly. The same with amps. Like, there, there are amps like the Powerball, that sound good if you just play them by themselves. But same thing, in the mix it's just, they get lost, because it's just dense and thick. Um, a lot of people don't know what it's supposed to be like in a mix. Yeah. So I said it's in the pedal, which is, uh, it's Driftwood Amps. Well, no, it's Driftwood Pedal. So what they did is, and I will review this, they made the biggest tube screamer out there. So, Michiel, zoom in on this. It's, it's purple, which I love, you know. So, it's got ins and outs, and I don't know why, because it's a tube screamer. Just use this and this, okay? Um, and then this section, 
is volume, tone and gain. Gain you have all the way down, so it's a boost. And this is really what it does. All the other stuff, not even connected. You pay for it, so it looks really cool and big. This is the Tube Screamer thing. This is, it's an LED that just goes on and off. So you can use just both. You can just use both. We had we had some. The idea was we had so much, so many parts left over from other builds. So we just and we didn't have so enough space to store them. Extra knobs, extra tubes, lights, LEDs, everything. Yeah, yeah. But it looks cool, isn't it? The coolest looking troop schema you've ever seen. Look, you could spend 79 bucks on a troop schema mini. You could yeah. spend 159 on a Moxie from Wampla, All good. You could get the Vamaram troop schema for 400 bucks, yes, or you could get the best troop schema on the market for 699. No, 666. 666, that's a, that's a number that's often used in, in, Pants and socks. in, <laughs> <gasps> I can't do it, I can't do it, people are going to get mad, should Maybe. I? Yeah, you should. Michiel, Michiel's got headphones on and he's like, no, I, better, I can't do it, because I, for Michiel I will not do it. Okay. So this is the 666 euro, pretty yeah. much the best fucking tube yeah. screamer ever made with extra knobs that don't do shit. Yes, and, and it's the first and only tube screamer with actually tubes in it. They, but they're not connected. No, no, they, we don't need it, but, but they are there and they're looking fucking great, so... So if you got a, you know, shitty Mesa amp, get this boost it and all of a sudden you have you know a target that you can hear i think that's good from a company that collects wood on the beach and if you believe the thing we said in this video you're an idiot i'm sorry i don't even know why you watched it this, up to this point i have zero idea probably because we put probably be, shut up glenn <laughs> probably because we put glenn in the thumbnail and you thought it's a good video <laughs> got you clickbait so uh, thanks to peter thanks man <laughs> <laughs> the other long-haired dudes, Marek, thanks to, oh, I gotta say this, the Reverend Laird Michiel Posny, former mayor of hell, scrum master PDF license holder. That's and Hale Hansen 666. <laughs> um, animals at the end. Mm -hmm.